the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time and this conversation. Help us understand your will for us. We bless sanctify our children here and the parents here. Bring our families together and make us pleasing to you day by day. We ask this through our mother as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace. Blessed art thou among men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father of the Son and Holy Spirit. So I know this is a very strange way to do class with the kids. There's a reason for it. That there's two reasons for why we're doing it this way. And the practical reason we're doing it this way is because the last few years, people have been coming forward to teach. We tried teaching only three people lasting three years, two years. And eight grades, three people, doesn't work for everyone. This year, the all three have dropped out. So I am out. So practically speaking, this is only a good do. Um, hopefully it'll go well. Idealistically speaking, there's another reason. So idealistically, our hope is by doing it this way, we bring together families, and we help tie and unite the faith of the generators together. Um, because when parents receive from their the children from their parents, this is important, this matters, this is true, it's a very, very different thing getting from a teacher. And especially, you know, you know if I tell them it's important, they might listen, they might not. If you're living in importance, they're going to listen in a whole different way, and they're going to receive it in a whole different way. Um, and, and so the hope is, by doing this together, uh, people will be able to be with their kids more, teach the kids better, and the kids will receive it in a whole new way. There's room at the table here for them to come up. You don't have to. There's room. Um, I'm just back here because I'm not a parent. Um, <laughs> so I really do this. I'm going to pass out then uh, the packets. Does anyone want a packet in the Spanish? Doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, how many parents do we have in this way? One, two, one. No. We'll go with the packets first. So it's the building things upon. The first section is, is titled Necessary Foundation. 
as it basically who is God, who made us, why did God make us, who is Christ. And then, and then for, the very little, for the very little, that's all you really need to have them. And you can spend six to eight months working with them all night. Um, then comes chapter of confession, the section, section on that. So the idea is hopefully they build off each other. So those who are going to confession should know the basics. Who is Christ? What is sin? You know, what is... And then the stuff about confession. How to go to confession, what are the commandments, uh, confidence, things like that. Uh, then we have our communion, the mass, other things there. And then finally, the uh, confirmation. Assuming the parents are taking care of that and saying we're okay. hygiene and everything else, 
That's all you guys. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Um, okay. So, as support for the parents, I mean, because this is a lot, and so we want to do is we kind of organize this class to help you guys be able to teach your children well. Rather than just good luck and be free, you know, we want to make certain you have support and help. There's a couple of things we've been doing. So one is this class. It's being recorded, thank you, Dan. And so if you can't make it for whatever reason, you can find it online. If you watch it again, find it online. Um, so you can ask me questions anytime during the week. If they record a question, so if we ask questions during the class, something that comes up. Um, you know, we, we'll give you a, a big packet that will go with this class. And it's scary, it's not as scary as looks, don't worry. We're also going to be having this. And so the, this, is, this is a, a translated version of that class, um, designed for younger children. And so that design is a conversation between you and the kids. Um, very simplified questions, answers, that again, I don't care where they're memorized. I want them to understand the concepts, to understand what they're talking about. These little questions and answers are helpful to get, get words right and terms right, it's helpful. But I prefer that they understand that God loves them rather than they can define what love is and know what that means. You know, so these things are designed to help you have that discussion with your children. To kind of be led discussion and help you. The very back of it is, again, they're optional things. Be, you know, at, at the end, when they come to the sacrament, I'll make sure they have enough information to receive their sacrament, know what the sacrament is, do they love on the sacrament, do they understand what they're getting. But the back will help you again some things to think about during the week, some things to practice during the week. So you have your lesson, but also things to ponder and discuss and keep up during the week. So this is a simplified version of what we're talking about today. Start today talking about who God is, 
So matter there's a God, and why do we care? Does this follow the, the catechism? Yes and no. Um, mostly it does. So it's going to be in the same order? In the same order, yes. The catechism, there's a couple exceptions. Uh, the catechism is divided into the creed, the sacraments, right. uh, prayer, and morality. Um, it's a morality prayer, excuse me. There was a couple places where it's because I thought it made sense to slip with some of those things. Before we talk about sin, I talk about confession. Oh. And then I combine some of the sacraments with, with some of the, so marriage I put in the same section with the, with the sins against marriage. Just to put them together, just because it made more sense. I thought talk about marriage and then the sins against marriage. And I then separated them by several weeks. So, but usually they're all the same time. Okay. Um, yeah. So anything ever is matter is mine. Because I'm at, I asked Shan to cover for me the Shan's issue. <laughs> there are three dates in the Vietnam, unfortunately. Um, and the first one is next week. <laughs> so next week, I'm going to retreat to Tucson. Uh, I won't be here. So that's September 23rd. September 23rd, I'm gone, October 14th, is that Monday? That's all you have calendars. October 14th, um, November 11th. How long? Just those Mondays. Um, I'm gone more than that. There are, so here, unfortunately, I'm going to retreat. Here I'm gone for four days at a conference in New Mexico. Here I'm giving a retreat in Georgia. So, Georgia. I'm not going to make it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if you get Shannon to cover for me, it'll be fine. Otherwise, we'll skip those days. <laughs>
could affect the way I live. Does it matter if there's no? And we live in a world that says you've got to exist as a matter very much. Or maybe God exists and matters, but not enough to affect the way you live. Other people live their, work, their, their, their life not based upon God, eternal life, but upon other things. So when we look at these questions, when I ask these things, when I talk about these things, the matter that exists, why does it matter, how does it exist, and how should I, I respond to God? Who is this God? Who is God? So is it important to know that God, if God exists, is only your own opinion? Is it like talking about your favorite flavor of ice cream, your favorite kind of pop? Is it your your opinion? And the first thing is to look at and recognize is that knowledge itself is a good thing. Knowing things is good. Knowing the way the world works is a good thing. A few people would argue that reading and writing is a, a good thing, or astronomy is, a, is important, or, you know, that we're made to know. Knowing is good. A few people would argue and say that the, the one understanding that morning labels no one understands it's on a cross symbol. symbol. No one said that that's not important or relevant. That's to keep you alive. That's to keep you from bringing those things. Or red light is to stop. Those things are important to us. They have to do it. These little skills of reading and writing, the path of raising each other, hearing, getting new ideas, being able to recognize things about our world, to live in it, those are just, just different opinions. They have to do with survival and the world and thriving. See, but knowing whether God exists, because of the depth of this question, how much it affects, much, much it deals with, this affects far more to be able to read or write. Far more than knowing how to tell what the red light is. This affects everything in our life. Just for a moment, we look at the difference in these two questions. See, God's existence has to do with the source of reality. People like knowing you know, how do things happen, how do plants grow, how do land masses form, why the oceans happen the way they do. This is asking, is the universe from chance? Or is there a loving creator who cares about us and walks with us? There are big differences. Does the universe simply happen by itself? But if someone loves me and cares about me, or something about a put on the left came together and it's man. Change the source. This means wondering about the meaning of the universe. Is there a purpose, a meaning to all this? To life itself? This life simply without me. Can I impose a meaning upon life? Can I decide what's important in my life? Or is there a meaning from somebody else? See, if there is a God, then the Creator makes the meaning. And I live with that meaning and walk with that meaning, or I don't. If there's no God, I can make it whatever I want. They're very different answers. Is there a reason why I was the first place? I made it for something. See, either the universe is the fact that we exist is just a happy fact. It's nice. It's my meaning thing. Or it's really different. As the center of who I am and why I'm here. The question about does it exist has to do with the purpose of things. What will happen when I die? Do we exist? Is there a soul that goes somewhere at death? Are we judged by our life here? If there's no God, the answer is not there. Then there's nothing. If there's a God, the answer is well, yes. My life here matters. What's to happen? If there's, if there's life after this, this is the end of the story. The things about people we love till the end, or is there life afterwards, meaning afterwards, reality afterwards? It means wondering about the place of human beings. 
Is mankind out of faith for a reason or a purpose? We have certain duties, certain obligations, or certain, certain place we're trying to live. Or not. He's wondering about the nature of goodness, good and evil, good and bad. Are things good and bad simply because we agree that we voted on it? Can we change that? Because we decide today that, well, this sort of thing is okay because the culture says it's okay. The law says it can be voted on. Today we're going to vote and say that people who are under four feet tall don't believe they're really human beings. Mm -hmm. Why not? Because good and bad is just about our opinions. The taller you are, the more important you are. That'd be a problem. <laughs> Or is there, does good and bad have to do with your creator, or does it have to do with very being and nature essence? What is good and bad? What's the mean and significance of the problem? Is there any difference between these things? We know a whole lot of other things. This is, hopefully just those few things show this question is fundamental and really, really important. And how we answer this, and how we live it out, and walk with this, Changes everything about our lives. Must change everything about our lives. This question, this answer, how we know of this, is really important. How do I know this? The book of Romans, St. Paul, first, first Romans chapter 1, is this. Creation of the world. God, this allows you to control the power and divinity of the name to be seen, understood, what is man. We can know that God exists. By three ways. Let's pass the time, why not? Go ahead, prove it. 
Father, go ahead. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Fruit with the God. He began by saying, well, first of all, do you believe that you exist? Which would be, of course, I believe I exist. But my guy said, well, no, I'm not sure that I exist at all. I don't know, but I can't, I can't believe that. It's okay. It's fine. Do you have a wall? Yeah, I have a wall. Let's see your wall. He says, if you don't believe you exist, I keep this. <laughs> And the answer was no. <laughs> then on, he said, look, right now we're, we're on this train. We can't go out and examine the train engine. We can't go outside and look at the, the, the way that the, 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 the pulls the train. We can look at, at this train car and say, right, because there's no engine in this train car. And say, this train car needs an engine to pull. But this has no engine. But I can prove the engine by looking at this train car, because the train car is moving. By examining what's happening to this train car, examining this, I, I know there is an engine. And, and looking at God and proving God is like that. See, the world, the way the world's made, by itself would not exist. The world, everything in the world that we look at, everything we can see and touch, everything measure, everything in the universe. In the beginning and end, started and will end. It changes. Everything that we look at has a need to be changed and moved. I think of Newton's law. It's like an object rests as a stay at rest, I don't have to stay in motion. When things change, something must change. Them. But everything that everything that existed was like, was like that. It needed to be changed, it existed, needed to nothing would exist. If all there are are train cars, and there is no engine, will the train move? If the train is moving, there must be what? An engine. If the universe needs to be, 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 be brought into existence, to be changed, something needs to happen, needs to make it. And everything you look at needs to be made. If you look at it, it has to be started. And there must be something different that's not like this. It's like the train engine's different than the train cars. This is my beautiful drive train. <laughs> I'll teach your kids art later, don't worry. <laughs> the universe must have been created by something that's, that's not as different. That's not like the rest of the universe. It doesn't have a beginning. It doesn't have to be, be pushed into a move and change. That we hold on. Looking at the universe, looking at the way the world is, the world is not enough. And because of the world, we examine these things, say the world has a beginning, the world is changed, the world moves. And there must be something beyond, which had no beginning, has no ending, and which simply exists of itself. Everything else must get existence. There must be something that had existence always. Otherwise, nothing would exist. It's making sense. Mm -hmm. Looking at the world around us, everything we have here had a beginning. Therefore, we know there's something that didn't have to be. And that we call God. And I'm going to keep it very, very simple, very brief, just because I mean, we talk about this all day. But we just want to add a little introduction to it. If you're interested in this one, no more, you've got other things to read. But just as an introduction, if people might tell you that science is, is proving God, it's not. Science actually proves there must be a God, right? Every, every time there's a scientific the, the relation, it's, it, it proves this. One of the things people will say, what about chance? Doesn't chance prove that, that, they, that there doesn't need to be a God? Things just happen by chance. They just happen. The problem is the very definition of chance relies upon a word. When we say there is chance, we're saying is two things, these two things happen 
is ordinary with the nation. If I draw this, it is a law, a principle, that's going to fall. Hit the floor. Something that's going to happen every time, almost every time, we say is a law. If one of these days it doesn't, by chance, it means something else intervened in its own laws. It means something else intervened that changed those ordinary principles of law. Chance relies upon order, or it does not rely upon chance. There is no chance without order. And so when someone says, in chance make order, the answer is no. Order, you see, there first, there can be chance. And so people say, well, couldn't things happen by chance? Well, no, the Lord had to go into those things. Is it possible that the dog died today with evolution? It's possible. Different question. But that would mean there's already a principle inside of matter and physical things which change and go develop that way. The fact that I can take flour and sugar and water and make bread out of it, or pig out of it, or pie out of it, is because the principle is already inside those things. There's already order to it. When things come together and they change and direct, it's because there's already order to them. And so the world with laws and principles, and no scientists would argue that there aren't laws and principles in this world. To quote, science relies upon laws and principles. Chance relies on order. Order is all I have on chance. That makes sense? And so know therefore there must be an ultimate principle of order, which we call God. A creator or something puts these things in place. Make sense? Okay. Psalm 19 says so this way it says, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies defend the builders craft. The day to the next the day is the message of the night not that's in parts of all. There's no word of sound that was heard, but the report was called the earth message to the ends of the world. God exists, God is good of those thoughts. The reason proves is God. Conscience proves God. See, there's something in us which tells us that certain things are good and certain things are bad. Everyone knows they should not steal, lie, kill, break contracts. Everyone knows that. And we know this when we do those things. In fact, there were times when the knowing this very, is very unhelpful to me. You know, where, where I want to do things, but my clients don't do those things. The fact that I have this conflict, the fact that I have, have, have everyone has the same conflict, everyone knows, everyone knows that murder is wrong, that stealing is wrong, hurting other people is wrong, that lying and cheating is wrong. Points to the fact that there must be a source to this. There must be a reason we have this. And it can't be simply we agree to that because other people, if I don't agree, I still feel bad. So I have this thing tell me, don't do it. It can't be um, simply that we practice it this way because otherwise it will change over time. It doesn't change over time, it will be universal. Our consciousness is shown as a blueprint to what things are supposed to be. If things are supposed to be a certain way, if it's supposed to act a certain way, there must be someone who tells me, act this way. So my conscience points to the fact that there is a creator and a lawgiver who says, live this way, do these things, be good, live a good life. So my conscience proves there's a way. So these things make mistakes. These things we can make confused, we can make error. The most important thing is God Himself has told us. See, God who loves us wants us to come to a relationship with Himself to leave us to figure it out. What's a relationship? What's a friendship? What's a union with us? So God comes to us and tells us, this is who I am, this is how to follow me, this is how to be saved. 
We'll look at this in more detail in the next class. We'll look at what religion matters. But just know that this is most clear. These are good. We need these. But this is without error. Should it make a difference? Let me stop there. Any, any questions on this before you want? Should it make a difference that God exists? Right? There are people who are rich and poor and, and those who believe and don't believe. People who are sad or sick or, or happy in both of those. And people who are, who are really bad people who are believers. People who are really good. People who are unbelievers. Right? You have people over who are real stinkers or atheists, people who are real, who are real stinkers who are Catholics. Does that make a difference then in God exists? Well, yes. How many people do you know who are different? I'm sure you know lots of people. If people were to say, well, everyone who you know must be, be holy and the same, you're a horrible person. That would be really fair to you. <laughs> people would say, because you know some people who are stinkers, therefore you must be a horrible person. That wouldn't be fair. We do this still with God. And we do this because we say, well, the Lord is judged by his faults, who's been the fault. Why does God allow evil in the world? Why does God allow us to choose bad? Why does God let even those who claim to be his followers act as real singers? And this has to do with, we'll come back to these ideas more deeply later on, to introduce them, has to do with the idea of free will. Why does God make us free? So we love it. Without freedom, there is no love. Like, if I were to come in here with a shotgun, to who's my friend today? <laughs> you're all going to say I'm your friend. It's not going to be true. This holy will never is obey any of God's laws. It will keep all the commandments. It can't be God's friend that has no free will. God made us not simply to exist, not simply to be like other things. God made us to have a relationship with him, to be his children, and to go to heaven. And because of this, God has given us this gift of free will, which allows us to love, and to be loved in a deeper way. And I can love this podium, not the way I love a person. I can love, so once we have free will, we can be loved by God and we can love God. We love each other. But because we have this freedom, we can use it that way. I can use my freedom to hurt people. Use my freedom to, to sin. Use my freedom to reject God. But the same way that I can use any tool to hurt, I can take a hammer, I can hurt someone with it. Let's make the hammer bad. It means my use to the hammer. The fact that I can use free will badly to hurt people to make it feel bad, it makes my use bad. And the Lord has taken away from us. So that would destroy our ability to love. If the Lord does instead, and we'll say in more detail, we'll go talk about the creation and fall by the need, the Lord puts limits. And the Lord says for 70, 100, 100 years, depending on how we live, we're given this freedom. At the end of that, though, and then there's our judgment. Have to have this life to live and walk with God, to live for each other, to help each other. And at that time, then what you've done in the world, you've helped to create the world, what you've given to the world, will be exactly. If you've done well with it, if you if you're friends with God, he will you'll, you'll be able to be received now. If you've rejected God, the people will not be able to receive that. Not because of him, but because of our own choices. That's the choice we make. In the end, God heals all things. When heaven comes, it will fix everything. In the end, the great answer to evil is that. 
That Christ died on the cross, Christ took suffering upon himself, that Christ came to redeem us. So our very sufferings can become in him transformed into good for ourselves and for the world. Suffering and evil are the last, the last. See, evil itself, evil is not something. It is something that's If I were to make it dark in this room, am I putting something in the room? No. Taking something out. If I put a hole in my shirt, I'm putting something in my shirt? No, I'm taking something out. Evil is something, it's something missing. It's taking God's gifts and the good that God makes and taking out the, 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 the good part of it, using them to harm and let them or something like that. Well, it means two things. It means, first of all, evil is not creative. Evil is destruction, not creation. It's not from God, it's from people taking things out. Second thing it means is that evil is never going to be as powerful as good, because evil relies upon good to do exist. Good exists without evil. Evil needs good to be there. And so in the end, evil will be destroyed. And only good will remain. We'll look at that in more detail later on. Um, We can prove that there is a God, we can prove that it matters that he exists. Who is he? Who is God? What do you mean by this word? I'm going to give a official answer. God is a supreme being, infinitely perfect, who made all things and keeps them in existence. Look at, look at these, these words, look at these differences. God is supreme being. It means there's nothing greater than God, I'm saying. Nothing greater than God, and higher than God. God is the source of all things. Only God exists of himself, but else needs to be created. He is the source and the measure of goodness. One of the sort of the universe, one who makes things and keeps them real. <clears throat> God is infinitely perfect. Everything that's good comes from God, is made by God, and close from God. He's the source of all things, the creator that had the limits. He's able to do all things. Now, God can't, it's our, it's our contradictory. God is all good, can't do evil. God can't, do, God can't make a square circle, so that, that's, that's nonsense. So that's something that's real. God can do all things. And God chose to create. Everything that exists is because God chose to make it. And if we look at it and say that that is real, it exists. God made it. Remember, evil is not God created, and evil is destruction. And God keeps all things in existence. See, God's creation is an end simply God saying, I'm going to be light and so Every second of, the, of every day, God is keeping you in existence. Every heart that you have, God is there. God's making you real, God's with you, God's keeping you alive. Meaning nothing. The important part of this to recognize is that God does not need us. When you and I make something, it's going to be, I make dinner tomorrow. I make a chair or a table because I want to sit down and use the table. God creates simply the chairs with us. We, you know, we, can't, we can't give God something that doesn't have. God doesn't rely on us. What God makes because He wants us to be loved. He made us simply to love us. That 
is the ultimate meaning of the universe. It's a beautiful and yeah, profound understanding of why we exist, where we're going and why. She is everything. Needs nothing to make all things that Joseph was with him. So, what should my response be to God? Knowing that God, knowing He exists, knowing He created all things, knowing He loves me, the matters that He exists, my response to then should be to follow Him, to love Him, to imitate Him, to walk. See, religion is not simply a list of rules, it's a relationship. The kind of relationship does require sacrifice. You know, you marry your spouse or you get to change your lifestyle to various degrees. You were a child, you had to change your lifestyle. And love's worth it. It's worth it to do that for your children, for your spouse. To come to God and, and to follow Him is again a change of lifestyle, or maybe a deeply of lifestyle. It's not simply we're here going some random facts. You know, the checklist, it's a relationship and saying there's somebody here who I want to know, who I want to follow and be close to. That's what When we come to God, we walk with God, we do this here to learn, not simply these random facts. It's not a discovery, it's to walk with God, to live with God, and hear and be trying. That's why we're here. And we're here to pass on this to ourselves, to our children, and our children's children. Life of happiness and peace and rest here on earth in the eternal life. That might mean that they can be faced difficult danger. It might mean we, we suffer, carry the cross of Christ. We do so knowing why we're going where we're going. It makes all the difference in the world. That's what we're doing. That's what we're here. That's what religion is. Okay, any questions on this? I'm going to end every one of these lessons with a four piece. Um, look at the faith. It's four cheap dogs. Unfortunately, as human beings, we look at things a piece at a time. Okay, we, we chew one, one bite at a time. It's easy for us to keep separate in our minds little boxes, God, and my faith, and my sacraments, morality. Don't want to do that. So I'm going to kind of end every single lesson connecting the four cheap dogs together in our planet and the lesson talk. The four chief dogmas are going to be the Trinity, the God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Incarnation, Jesus Christ is God and become man, the Church, how we come to God, know God, and ourselves. So when it comes to God exists, well, the Trinity is God. We'll look at this later, of the lesson on this, discuss this. But this is who God is. But often very important when talking about God, the Trinity is central, because it is God. The incarnation. See, Jesus Christ is both God and man. We all understand that God that took on flesh, walked among us, and died for us, and preached to us. And following this man, Jesus, listen to what he says, reading his words at Mass, and Celebrating his life makes no, no sense. But the fact that this man is actually God as well changes everything. And so the incarnation is Christ. Jesus is God. As well as man. And then we'll look at that what he put The church. The church is God's kingdom. This is the means to which he must pass on his faith to us, plus his compilation with the baptism of the sacraments, all these things that was given us his way to come to him to know him. It was true. It was one church. And man and the female are made of the likeness. And so we're made to know God, be with God, to love God, to follow God, to live with heaven forever. So everything that we do is a reflection. Who lies? Assuming we are living right. Everything but sin. It's not good that. Ben is on this. Let's close with a prayer. Thank you for your time.
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness to us, for your greatness. Help us understand more deeply what you've called us to the invitation you've given us. Help us to love you more truly, and to pass on this love to our children, our grandchildren, all those around us. Make us true disciples and followers of your Son. Be all that we say and do be for your glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you. Thank you.